Welcome to World War II Chronicles, a weekly tribute to America's fighting men and women in commemoration of the Second World War. These programs are narrated by Ed Herlihy and are based on the news broadcasts of the war period from the recorded sound collection of the National Archives in Washington, D.C. The administration's civil liberties record was marred during the war by the relocation of thousands in America of Japanese descent. The threat of Japanese saboteurs was considered a very serious possibility. Sabotage plots and rumors of sabotage took on increasingly important place in the news. In the little desert town of Roosevelt in Antelope Valley, north of Los Angeles, police officials investigated an apparent plot to kill scores of Americans with ground glass mixed into canned shrimp imported from Japan. Deputy Sheriff Ray Reeves, who was assigned to investigate the canned food, said the glass was mixed up into the shrimp too thickly to have been there by accident. Questioning the loyalty of over 70,000 American citizens of Japanese ancestry, the press and political leaders called for their removal. On February 19, 1942, the president authorized the army to make arrangements for the moving of over 100,000 Japanese and Japanese Americans from the West Coast to relocation centers in western deserts and Arkansas. When the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, our West Coast became a potential combat zone. Living in that zone were more than 100,000 persons of Japanese ancestry. But no one knew what would happen among this concentrated population if Japanese forces should try to invade our shores. Military authorities therefore determined that all of them citizens and aliens alike would have to move. The Army provided housing and plenty of healthful, nourishing food for all. The residents of the new community set about developing a way of life as nearly normal as possible. They held church services. They issued their own newspapers, organized nursery schools, and some made camouflage nets for the United States Army. Although the U.S. government attempted to accentuate the benefits of the move, the relocation programs were largely unfortunate and unnecessary. Few of the Japanese Americans interned during the early panic were allowed to leave the relocation sites before the end of the war. I'm Ed Herlihy. Join me next time for World War II Chronicles. World War II Chronicles was produced by the American Veterans Center and Radio America in cooperation with the National Archives. To listen to more episodes, Subscribe on iTunes or visit AmericanVeteransCenter.org. We need your help to keep the legacy of our World War II generation alive. Visit AmericanVeteransCenter.org to make a donation to support World War II Chronicles and the ongoing work of the American Veterans Center.